Hey guys, what's up? Jason Henry, the Redhead Henry here, and today is a good day. Well, actually, I wasn't planning on doing this tutorial today. Um, I've pretty much been in lockdown mode with uh, Goku vs. Evil Goku 4. Um, I started working on that over the weekend, and I've just kind of been working on I worked on it all weekend, and then I also uh, worked on it a little bit this week. But driving home today, I was thinking to myself, you know, God, I, I, <laughs> I haven't done a tutorial in so long. I've left everybody hanging. Um, what, what's a quick tutorial that I can do? Um, to, you know, make sure that everyone's like kind of, you know, still staying in the game here with uh, <laughs> not unsubscribing to me. Like, oh, hey, this guy was crunching out tutorials left and right, and now he's just stopped doing it. So I figured I might as well just uh, crunch out a quick one for you guys here today. The next one, actually, I was going to do was the uh, the Aura one, but that's probably going to take that's going to take a while. That'll be like two or three tutorials in one. So I'll get that all in one video ready for you guys. But that'll be soon. Trust me. Everyone's been asking for it, and it's coming soon. But so just hold on for that. Um, but I got a lot of requests for this one. Um, I'm going to be showing you two methods today um, on how to get that scrolling background kind of effect going inside of After Effects. You know, it's like, it's like the repeating background, like when you watch the Flintstones and they keep running. <laughs> and then it's just the background just keeps repeating over and over. Um, so that's the effect that I'll be showing you guys today. So there's two ways of doing it. Either way works good. Um, this first method I'll be showing you is actually the way I've been doing it for many years, but there's another way of doing it too, and I'll get to that in uh, in just a second here. So we're actually going to get started in paint. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead, and uh, if you guys want to find uh, one of these sprite sheets, I forget what games this is from. I think it's, it's Super Sonic Warriors. Everyone pretty much has... Um, these sprite backgrounds. I think you can get them from uh, Spriter's Resource. But anyway, I just opened this one up in paint and you want to make sure that you don't have any uh, edges or anything like that. You want to get the full width of this background so that there isn't really any choppiness when it is uh, repeating. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to extend the width of this thing. I'm going to go ahead and hit Control A and Control C and control V. So I copy or I selected copied and now I pasted and we're just gonna line this sucker up. Probably should have zoomed in. Actually I will zoom in here. So these uh, sprite backgrounds are actually perfect for that repeating effect and actually those LSW LSW ones? Yeah. The LSW ones are really good for it as well because they also give that repeating kind of effect. So I'll paste another one, control V, just line the sucker up, and yeah, that looks fine. I'll just bring this over. So you can make this as long as you want. I only pasted it three times. Save that, and we're going to jump over into After Effects here. So I'm going to import this thing in. I'll actually import both of them in, and we'll do a new composition doesn't really matter what the dimensions are. I'm just going to go with an HD1. I'll call it main comp just for the sake of it. And we'll bring in that BG2 right into the main uh, timeline here. And I'll just scale this thing up. So now you can move this thing around. If you had a character standing here and wanted to pan the camera over, you could parent the the character and the background to a uh, null object or a camera. And we'll just mess with the positioning on this. You can mess with the positioning on the camera as well. But we'll do this. I'll just zoom this thing in. Say like two seconds. It'll just be panning over. And render or RAM preview, sorry. So that's kind of how you get that effect going. You can mess around with that. Maybe it goes back a little bit quicker. Something like that guys can mess around with that. So that's really nice and that's a way that I had been doing it for a while. There is another way and I will show you how to do that right now. It's a lot easier, a lot quicker. So I'm going to delete this layer and we're just going to bring in the background whoa, on its own. <clears throat> so there's actually a plugin inside of After Effects called Motion Tile. So if you go into your effects and presets and you type in tile, or not tittle, tile, <laughs> and drag that motion uh, tile effect right under the layer Let's scale this thing up first. So now you'll notice that we have these options we can mess with here. And if you take the tile center and just mess with the width, so now you'll notice, hey, it's repeating automatically on its own. How does it do that? 
Well, basically what this plugin does is it takes whatever layer that you put inside of your timeline and it, it takes the pixels that are around those edges and basically moves them over and shifts it. So it's pretty much doing all that work that we did in paint for us automatically. So if you wanted to, you can mess with the height. Now it's just going up and down. I don't know why you would do it that way um, on a particular background like this, but hey, you know, it gets the idea across. You can mess with that. So, uh, so yeah, you guys can mess around with that. If you click the mirror edges, this is pretty nifty too. Um, you can get a lot of other uh, pretty nifty going effects here. You can actually extend out those pixel, uh, pixels around the layer. So you can scale that out. And it basically just, it basically takes the layer and flips it, um, depending on if you're doing it with the width or the height. So I'll just undo all of that. Actually, I'm just going to delete this and undo everything. And I'll drag that motion tile on here again, and we'll start at zero seconds. And I will, and you could set a keyframe for all of these things. So I'll set a keyframe for the tile center, and we'll scrub forward about a second, and then we'll just bring it over like so. And then maybe we'll go over like another two seconds, and we'll go back. And then again, if you forgot how to uh, get uh, access to all the keyframes on your layer, if you just hit U with your layer selected. Um, that brings up all the keyframes that you've set. So now if I RAM preview this thing, yeah, buddy, that's looking pretty awesome. So that's it from me today. I hope you guys found this tutorial helpful, and I will catch you guys next time.